We're here today with Ferista and the Ferista Academy and we're going to bake some gingerbread uh, cookies um, and I'm here, we're at the Bloom's house and I'm here with uh, Jonathan Bloom, Marissa and Marissa Graham <laughs> yes. and uh, Chris Lynch and yeah, let's get started. So we, yeah. Step one. Step one. <laughs> Flatten out your gingerbread. Okay, flatten <laughs> you know more than me. Um, how were you guys introduced to ice hockey? Um, we'll start with you, Marissa. Um, so I grew up watching hockey games on TV with my dad. Um, every night when he'd come home from work, he'd turn the hockey games on and we'd watch together. And I just got so that um, I started to love the game and I just kept asking to, to play. And so he bought me my first set of equipment. And rest is history. <laughs> cool. Did you play any more sports growing up? Yeah, I played quite a few sports. Um, I played softball, volleyball, basketball, did track, um, but then there came a time where I had to put more focus on hockey if I wanted to go further, so I kind of started doing hockey all year round and focused on that. Okay, Jonathan, how were you introduced to ice hockey? Yeah, my story is a little different from uh, Marissa, you know, her being from Canada where Hockey is kind of king, sacred there. You know, everyone <laughs> plays. And uh, me being from Southern California, it's a little different. Um, I got into it playing uh, roller hockey. Um, just after school, a lot of us friends and my dad, we'd go on our street and just in our shoes or rollerblades, and we'd play hockey in front of the house, you know, all night. And I decided one day to try ice hockey, and I think I was probably about six years old, and I made the switch over and been playing ice hockey ever since. Cool. Did you play any more sports growing up? Um, not really. I grew up surfing also. Um, obviously there's no leagues for that or anything. It was just kind of a hobby and we did it for fun. Um, after hockey games we'd go to the beach and surf and all that stuff but uh, never really did baseball or soccer or anything like that. That must have been such like um, a difference like going to the beach, doing surfing and then going like to a cold ice rink in California, those been so Yeah, it was great. We, uh, you know, sometimes when we we're growing up, we would always have like the early morning games at seven or eight o'clock, and um, after that, we had a motor home, and we would take that down to the beach, and there'd be about like ten of us teammates all go down and just enjoy the water and have barbecues, and it was, it was pretty fun. Okay, Chris, where? How were you introduced to ice hockey? Uh, my parents uh, took me to the rink when I was uh, two years old, uh, and uh, yeah, I <laughs> fell in love in, with the game. Two years old, wow. <laughs> yeah, after that, so, and I went a lot on my rollerblades and stuff, so. Did yeah. you play any more sports growing up? Uh, yeah, I played football. Uh, I bandy, I don't know what we call it. Bandy. bandy yeah. uh, I just uh, learned what that was this yeah. week. And uh, yeah, other like, I even tested karate. I don't know if karate. I don't say that. Nice. <laughs> what drove me to keep playing? Yeah, like, uh, what, like where did your motivation come from? I think um, so. When you're young, uh, they usually take like young female teams to go see like the national women's team play and, and stuff like that. Um, they would do like tours around to the communities and, and play and then you'd be able to like meet the players after. So there's a lot of like um, community involvement through the women's national team, Team Canada. So I think that's where you start to realize like where you could go with the sport and how far you can take it. Um, so I had dinner one night with one of the national team players and um, learned a little bit about her story. And then I think I was, I think I was like 11 or 12 years old. And then after that dinner, my dad told me like I came right out and said, I want to play university hockey. Like I want to do what I can. And he said, okay, like I'll, I'll do everything in my power to help get you there. But you're the one that has to work hard and you're the one that has to put in um, the time and effort to get there. So. Just through experiences of meeting people and having those role models is how um, I decided that I wanted to keep going with it and, and take it as far as I could go. So you were really like inspired by... Yeah, yeah I would say so, for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
Jonathan, where did like your motivation come from, man? Yeah, um, for me, I never dreamed of playing professional hockey or playing in the NHL. Um, I just enjoyed going to the rink and playing hockey and being with my friends. So, um, you know, I realized when I was about 14 or 15, I was pretty good at hockey, and <laughs> kind of the rest is history. It's, it's become a job now and provider for my family. But um, yeah, growing up, I just I just loved hanging out with my friends and playing hockey, and it was fun. And now I've been playing professionally for 12 years now, and you know, hopefully a few more years left. Yeah. But should we go to the next step? Like, this isn't step going, two! This is not going good for me. Make some shapes. I think we need more flour. I don't think we need more flour. Mine kept breaking. <laughs> Mine did too. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh gosh. Oh, no, no. People watching this are going to be like, they just kept rolling the dough and rolling the dough. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. So, Jonathan, this question is for you. Yep. So, you were the first guy ever to be drafted in California. Yep, in the first round, the NHL draft, yep. Why do you think you had that development? Um, I had really good coaches growing up in Southern California that pushed me, you know, every day. Um, sometimes it definitely wasn't fun. It was hard, but, um, you know, they made me better and I had a good, good family that uh, helped out. It's pretty expensive to play hockey in Southern California, and uh, my parents were able to, to provide for me and um, you know I was just fortunate enough just to stay on the right path and work hard every day and um, when I went to Canada to play junior hockey we had a really good team and just worked out well and kind of the rest was history there and got selected uh, in 2007 in Nashville. Yeah that's big. Marissa you have played both ice hockey in Sweden and Canada and America. And America, yeah. Like, what's like the biggest differences? Uh, you like, within the female hockey? The biggest difference would be, I mean, number one, the ice surface. Obviously, it's a lot bigger here because um, we're playing yeah. on Olympic sized ice. Yeah. But the other difference would be like the style of play. Mm -hmm. So, in North America, it's a lot more physical. Um, yeah. Whereas in Sweden, here, it's a lot more of a skating, like, skill game. Um, and Jonathan, you have played in NHL, yep. uh, KHL, and uh, SL, yep. where you're currently playing for Ferry Stud. What would you say are the biggest differences between like the leagues? Um, nothing beats the NHL. You have the biggest, fastest, meanest hockey players from all over the world playing in the best league, and um, it's definitely more speed, more physical, uh, more skill. Um, I think Russia had a little more skill than in Sweden, but Sweden, you know, it's very defensive hockey and the guys are really, really fast and it's very defensive. I think those are uh, the major differences that I've noticed playing in the different leagues. Yeah. And uh, Chris, you have uh, your mode club is Nord, outside Karlstad, and now you're playing as a junior in Ferista. Um, why do you think that you had that development you had? Yeah, uh, I've uh, had good coaches during the years that teach me a lot and uh, yeah, a lot of practice and a lot of ice, practice on ice and stuff like that, so I think that's why. Uh, I just beheaded my person. <laughs> Sorry, what, what was the hard question? part. <laughs> Peeling it off. <laughs> Can't multitask, can't bake. And um, you're like a female, like in the ice hockey world. What would you say is like, you know, the toughest part of being a female? Uh, I would say like the there's an extreme difference of treatment. Um, obviously, like it kind of through your years, it kind of sucks, and it's hard to see the men get so much opportunity, and um, just even like here the junior team and the senior men's team has a locker room whereas we don't have our own uh, permanent locker room so I would say the inequalities for sure are sometimes tough to to see because you see them getting um, so, so many uh, extra perks and stuff and um, it's a lot harder uh, it's a lot harder life as a female hockey player um, I would say how, how would you hope like that the female ho hockey has developed like within like 10 years or 
Um, um, with where I'm at right now, I mean, they have really good systems back in North America for, for collegiate level and university level, but in terms of like professional, um, I would hope in the coming years there'd be more of a sustainable league so we could actually get um, compensation and uh, like a paycheck that would cover like our normal living costs and our necessities because um, right now the girls who play past university, I would say they don't do it for the money, they do it because they love the game, and myself included. So. Why do you love the game so much? <laughs> I think it's kind of like I was born with it. I mean, being Canadian, it's what we have. It's it's hockey's so important to us. It's not just like a game. It's more of like a lifestyle. Um, you carry it with you everywhere you go. Yeah. So um, I love it because I grew up loving it. It was something that I brought my family together. Um, like the weekends were about hockey and family time. We'd go on road trips together to to different areas where I'd have to play my games. And um, always after every game, we'd go out for dinner as a family and we'd be able to talk over the game, talk about life, and that's very important, like quality time. So um, I love it because it brought my family together, allowed us to have very good quality time. And um, hockey's taught me a lot of life lessons along the way, like work ethic and drive and how to persevere. So um, I can't say enough about what the game of hockey has actually given me in my life. So if you lo look back when you were growing up, um, like, do you have any advice advice to yourself? Um, there's always going to be good days, bad days. That's, I think, anything in life. Um, it's how you handle the bad days. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't let it dwell. Especially for me now, um, I have kids and I can't bring any of the negative things from hockey back home. I try to leave that at the rink and just try to focus on them and um, just have fun with it because it goes fast. You know, I'm already going to be 32 next month and, um, you know, I, I, just a while back I feel like I was uh, Chris's age and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it goes very, very fast, the hockey career, and um, just enjoy it while you can. That was really good advice. Marissa, do you have any advice? <laughs> um... Biggest thing, yeah, I agree with what he said, like, enjoy it while you can, because when you're young, I don't think you realize how fast it really goes until you get to be, like, mid-20s or, or 30s, and you're like, whoa, <laughs> where did the time go? Um, but the other thing I would say is don't sweat the small stuff. Don't, little, don't let, like, little things um, get to you. I would say let go as much as you can and just try and, like, not stress and just enjoy the journey. Um, because I think you get so focused on um, getting to the next level or or focused on some little frustrations and stuff that you forget to actually just enjoy where you're at. So I would say enjoy where you're at and enjoy the process. Wow, that was also really good advice. So enjoy the, the journey. So what are the most important strengths to be a successful ice hockey player, do you think? Dating. <laughs> Yeah. Skill wise, skating. Be a good skater. <laughs> yeah, if you could practice anything right now at a young age, it's it's skating. Um, yeah. Everybody's so good now at such a young age. It's seriously incredible. It's just when I go back in the summer and I skate with some of these younger uh, kids and I see what they could do, uh, I I can't even do it. You know, it's it's pretty okay. insane of what they're doing. And um, the game of hockey is really growing, and it's it's good to see um, all over the world. Uh, Skating, I think too, uh, but uh, also shooting is uh, important, I think, to, to uh, practice from a young age, so that you, yeah, get good at Definitely, like, skill-wise on ice is skating. Um, that's why I was able to get to the higher levels, because um, I worked really hard on my skating abilities as a, as a young athlete. Um, so when you get to the higher levels, uh, skating really differentiates you from the rest um, and then I would say like if we're going off ice um, character work on your character development like having a good attitude um, and a hard work ethic okay I have a question to Jonathan and Marissa do you still like get the same joy out of playing ice hockey as when you were like when you began with it when you were younger uh, 
I would say there's definitely enjoyable moments. I mean, you wouldn't keep being a hockey player if you didn't enjoy the game, but um, definitely it wears on you um, as the years go on. It's like any other job, you kind of get tired of it, and um, it's just hard sometimes, you know. Sometimes you feel like you're kind of just just a piece of meat, you know, when you're out there skating and working, and just sometimes it doesn't go well for you, and I don't know, it's just, uh, like I said, it, you know, you, you could be a computer programmer and have lots of ups and downs, but, I mean, as a hockey player, you're entertaining thousands of people, and there's a lot of pressure and anxiety and, and moments where, like, you know, you, you just don't want to do it sometimes, but you have to, and um, it becomes a job. You know, when I was 16, 17, you know, you never think about what's going to be in 10 years from now and stuff like that. So it's when you're playing junior hockey, you're living the time of your life. You're just focused on hockey school and it's fun. And now I got two kids, wife, dogs, you know, house, mortgage, yeah. bills. So everything adds to that stress as uh, the years go on. But uh, that's life. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then you were like saying during the beginning, like that, like we're all human, mm -hmm. like even ice hockey players. Yeah, yeah, there's a human side of the world that some people may not see, you know, you, you just see us on TV or in the arena and stuff like that, but we all go through life's daily struggles and, um, you know, sometimes you could read negative stuff about you online or whatever it is, or people are saying mean things, but um, like I say you try not to bring that home with you and dwell on it too much because it could be a little hard on some people. But, like, how do you handle those, like, that are mean and stuff like that? Uh... I'm the one that's playing hockey. I'm the one that's, you know, done well for myself, provided for my family. You know, I just look at my family's happiness and go off that. If they're upset, then I got issues. I don't care what Joe Schmo from, you know, Joe Russia Schmo. or Sweden <laughs> or Canada is saying about me. You know, um, at the end of the day, they they most likely have never played the game of hockey and don't understand what we're going through on a daily daily schedule so yeah that's how I handle it I mean mm. it's not fun when you say negative stuff about someone and you know I think the world could learn from that and be a better place <laughs> yeah um that's a hard question because I think as you get older like your relationship to the game changes so when you're younger you're just purely playing for fun it's because you love it um but as you start to get older into the higher levels, um, it's not just on the ice, you just go out there, do what you can, and just have fun and kind of goof around. Um, you have to take things more seriously. There's more focus that comes with it. There's all the off-ice work, all the dryland training lifts that you gotta go through. So um, it's not always fun, because um, you're pushing your body to its limits, you're, you're trying to get better, um, but you do it because you first fell in love with the game, and then you have the goals to pursue and to get to the higher levels. So there's some things that come with it that you have to do if you want to get to the higher level and you don't necessarily want to do. Um, but deep down, you always try have to remember like why you started playing and you remember the love that you had as a kid. Um, so I'm starting like now being here in Sweden. Um, I'm starting to find that joy and that love for the game again that I had when I was a kid. So I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah, so that's what's nice to see it. Because it's like, and then at the end of the day, like the joy for the sport, like, that's yeah. why. So Chris, you're still a junior. Yes. Where, where does the competitiveness, competitiveness come from? Uh, I think I've always been comp competitive, but uh, you know, I've always, uh, competed against my friends and everything like that so I think maybe that's where it comes from you know always compete so are you gonna bake the best cookies today uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> I don't know <laughs> mine are looking good <laughs> yeah I was peeking over there yeah. looking, looking real good <laughs> okay so we've come to the last no. question now and I was just no. like thinking that we could talk a little bit more about like uh, our Christmas tradition because Marissa comes from Canada, and Jonathan, he comes from America, and Christopher, he comes from Sweden, but 
His mom is also Irish, so he's half Irish and half <laughs> Swedish. Yeah. So he also has a little bit different traditions. Yes. <coughs> okay, and Chris, do you want to tell us about our traditions? In, uh, you mean Sweden or Irish? Or? Yeah, like how we celebrate Christmas at home. Yeah, in uh, the 24th we open the presents we get from our, yeah, from uh, our parents or... or from, uh, from Santa From Claus. Santa, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, and we eat a nice dinner and stuff that day, so... Like we eat turkey. Yeah. Because most people in Sweden eat ham and we eat... We eat turkey, that's and that Irish. is the Irish that's tradition. That's the Irish tradition, yeah. eating so turkey. Yeah. Have yeah. also Julfinka. We have yeah. also, but yeah, we have a mix. Um, so a little bit different in Canada. I know in Sweden you guys celebrate on the 24th, but we celebrate with our family on the 25th. So in the morning, um, we usually wake up and open presents because Santa vis visited our house. Um, so yeah, we open up presents on the 25th. And then we usually have like a later lunch, early dinner with like our whole family. Um, some of the stuff you'd see on the table is like turkey stuffing, um, maybe ham, potatoes, sweet potato, and then some salads and stuff. So um, that would be like a classic Canadian Christmas. Um, usually too, the World Juniors are happening at that time. So a lot of the Canadian households have like the games on. So that's a tradition as well. I think that starts Boxing Day. So Boxing Day is what we have on the 26th. It's the day after Christmas. Um, there's lots of sales and stuff. And then hockey tournaments. Oh, that's so cute. I'm so sad that you have to miss that. No, <laughs> that's OK. Yeah. I'm yeah. still happy to be here. <laughs> For us, um, our family's been kind of celebrated on the 24th, also kind of like Sweden, uh, with a big dinner with all of our families, you know, grandmas, aunts, uncles that would come over and normal food would probably be, I know we'd switch it up all the time. Sometimes we'd have Mexican food or steak and prime rib or some shrimp and lobster type deal. Um, no real like hockey tradition with Christmas. It was just more family sit around the dinner and um, my great uncle would play his guitar and we'd sing songs, Christmas songs. Aww. And then on the 25th, um, in the morning, yeah. the Christmas day, we would open up presents from, uh, Santa. Yeah. Yeah. Because that feels a little bit different, like celebrating Christmas in California, just because yeah, it's like no on the snow, beach. No, and it's, <laughs> it's still warm now and tons of sun. So, yeah. um, you know, you're in a shorts and a jacket pretty much. It's sandals still <laughs> wow. yeah it's, it's nothing like uh canada or over here yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're now going to put the gingerbread cookies um in the oven so it'll be continued so Christmas. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Thank you for joining.